Hey crew, cool. Just a quick one on um, attack and what we're looking for, I guess, when we set throughout the field. Um, you know, primarily attack is based around the amount of space that we have available. So at the moment we know, you know, seven metres um, it's been extended to. So for attackers, the more space we have, the more creativity we have, the more options we have to play ball and pass the ball. Um, the less amount of space there is, we get into that real tough, nitty-gritty, grindy style game. Um, so yeah, coaches, we do like having a lot of space in front of us. Um, that does allow us to be able to set our scoops better, um, to be able to get the right people in the right positions and run the right plays that we're after. Um, so really important, and space is time. The more space we have, the more time we have on the ball. And great players love having time on attack. Hey, so obviously we talk about attack, we talk about having space in front of us and wanting to have space. So one of the key goals to defence is minimising the amount of space that the um, attackers have. So being in a position where we can be set early, um, and we practice being set early, so we can get up and take away metres from them. So if time is space on attack, taking away that time takes away and limits the options that they have. Um, for me, it can happen all over the field. I like my teams putting direct pressure. So as soon as a touch is made, they move up and put pressure immediately on the ball carrier, forcing the ball carrier to either take the touch or look to pass. Um, but we can't do any of that without knowing where the onside mark is or whether we're set or not. So really important, um, being able to create the space on attack and being able to minimise the amount of space available on defence. So let's check out some of that in reality. It is New South Wales to get us underway in this state of origin the fixture, the men's open. And straight away onto the attack. The man to watch is Dylan Hennessy. He's got silky skills and footwork to match. He is in the number six for the New South Wales side. As that tap is on, Langbridge, the cutout ball, gets left behind. Masashi was waiting and... Another clip with the defence racing up Big fast. Big win at the State Cup over Dawson not too long ago, back in December. So the whole purpose of this is to put pressure on the attackers. Smattered across quick, this New South Wales outfit. And force the error. We'll see a few of them a little later as Turnover well. Turnover and possession in a great place to start. What our viewers... In this case, let's imagine. watch the fact that the attackers margin, aren't coming up fast on the defence, giving them much more time that. to actually run their plays. The recipient of the heavy touch. Oh, on to Boo, so sliding under. Off, just coming off the line, so they're able to make the touch prior to... They're not leaving their the line, try. yes, confirmed. However, have they learned from that? Let's watch. The they move up faster or they Hampton. keep letting them have time and space? Opens. Had a crack so, the still time and space. Had a marvellous campaign. And Russell, oh, what a ball and that is. there was no one Finding going up Griffin, off the line, the you were just made, talking about him, Jackson. Line, and therefore, too much time, try time. And also popping on out the wing there, Masachi. He is a great finisher with plenty of pace. So will they come oh, that way? Yeah. No, the left-hand so channel instance, is the way to go. Down. Referee confers. Heads back to the end goal. That's all we need. Confirmation. On the line. Hey, friends. How you doing? Uh, this is a quick video to discuss coaches' goals on defense and attack. Um, I'm going to stick to one sort of area, which is the contests. Um, you know, whilst coaches' goals can be based around the style of coach they are, the style of opposition they're up against, um, whether it's a week-to-week -week competition game like Metro Cup or whether it's in a tournament environment, which is like over four days. Um, yeah, so tools and styles um, make a big difference too. The tools being the players that I have available um, can affect the kind of game plan that I want to run um, as well. So tools, coaching styles, and then the contests are the three things. But I'm going to discuss the contest today. So the contests that I see that I like to focus on and you know set some minimum standards for my players around are the transition, so contesting the transition, um, contesting momentum, and contesting position. So just briefly to discuss contesting transition, what it looks like. Um, transition, there's three of them in a game primarily. There is the transition from attack into defence, um, transition from defence into rucking or defence into subset, and then transitioning from rucking into attack or subset into attack. Okay, so three transitions. Uh, just briefly looking at the attack into defense transition, um, a common one that coaches like to focus on. So for me, it's about winning the turnover. Um, so if my team have just been touched, let's say was the touch made in front of the defender or behind the defensive line. So if it's in front of the, the defensive line, then it's gonna be a fast turnover. I'm gonna give you guys the ball 
and then I'm going to need to get onside really quickly because you've got the ball in hand. You're going to have a chance to roll it really quickly. Um, or someone from my team scoops through the line, they get t touched on the back, and they continue to run. We have time to set nice and early, slow turnover for us to set, communicate, compress around the ball, and then get a really good transition defensive setup with our defensive shape. Um, attack into defence, um, yeah, determined by the speed of the turnover and then where the touch is made. And then you can read their intent, so direct or subset as well, um, yeah, based on maybe where the ball is turned over um, and who's been on the field and how long they've been out there. So there's some teams you'll play against and it can be the first minute of the first game on day one in a tournament and we've tapped off, we don't score, well, they're still going to run a subset. That's their style of their club, that's the style of the coach. They're going to run a subset for the entire tournament. Some very successful teams have built their entire patterns around 40 minutes worth of subsets for 8, 9, 10, 11 games um, in a row. So we can be prepared for that pattern of play or that policy. Um, and for me, that's where the homework comes in. You've got to do your homework on your other coaches, you've got to do your homework on the other clubs. Because um, if they have a pattern of play, then we can create a response to that pattern of play. Um, so attack into defence um, yeah, is transition one. Transition two, yeah, defence into rucking is the opportunity um, to either go direct or expansive if we're going to stay strong, um, or we look to run our subset. And if we're going to run a subset, there's three places we can run a subset. Rehearsed places away from the sub box, we could have a buddy down the far side wing or three players just running three-man rucking down the far side wing while four or three players get off the field. We can go direct. Um, so direct rucking sets generally come once teams are under a bit of pressure or you're losing a game or you just want them to go straight. I don't care, you've just got to get to halfway on touch three, run your four-man rucking and just pass to the runner, wrap out, pass, wrap out. Um, wingers will get involved in that direct style rucking as well to go straight down the field. Um, or box side rucking, the most common form of rucking, where they're going to bring the ball to the box, which makes it closer for all the subs to get around and get onto the field. So subset, there can be three, same thing, three places the subset can go. Um, and then with our direct stay strong rucking, we're either going to be direct or go expansive. Cool, on that rucking, so that's Good defense and rucking. So a basic subset clip in case you're not sure of the terminology. Jackson, take us through the Queensland side while well, they work their way Queensland upfield. The Queensland side, side one screen. through to 14. We've got Law, subbox. Courtney, Norman, Notley, so get Russell, Mars, on. Benbo, Tired Law, legs off. Kenny, Bauer. Hegarty, Pride, Griffin, You'll and notice Wayne. in any so of these, if you're watching the referees at the same time, the referees Russell are trying to get off heart. before the players in a subset so that we have our fresh legs on and in good position. Nearly still go. play on, Jackson. I don't even think Correct Lane was then. expecting Correct then, so in the change, it, it just occurred by the referees. Back to Queensland Lane. are going straight up the just field rather than across the sub We're trying to make that ground. Trying to get up nice and tough. A very fast start, mind you. The referees need to be ensuring from both that they're controlling and the touches there. and ensuring that players are onside, not leaving too early. Hennessy the subset early rolling change then, same thing, so the referees would have already changed. Could in fact play under that as one goes off, a new player comes on and wraps around. And why wouldn't you when you've got the class So same the thing, the referee's job here is to ensure they're all onside first of all. Well, he still is at the peak of his powers, that's for sure. Of course, helping lead Hornsby. The expansive return then, this doesn't happen all that often in many games. So instead of coming to their box where the defence is compressed, expecting them to be there, they move them back wide again. Well, of course, it's been a little over an hour since What that does is it enables them to have options to go either side and also find weaknesses in the defensive Referee then, same thing, their main job, ensuring players are on side. Transition three is rucking or subbing into attack. Cool. So... Turnover, my team gets the ball. Create momentum, touch one. Increase the momentum, touch two. Balance into position, touch three. Balance in, into position, touch four. And strike on touch five. So momentum, momentum, balance, balance, strike. Cool, now that can also be determined by where we're at in the game. Um, if we're losing the game, then we might look to just turn around and start slamming it straight down the momentum, 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 strike. Because we need to get the ball down there. Score a trial, force a penalty. Um, we might go momentum, balance, strike. Hey, look, I want you guys having a crack on the third from halfway. Um, and then if they make the touch, set, strike. And we just go straight into it. Um, yeah, so it does depend on the game as well, how we're going to look at setting it up. A lot of teams will that run subsets will set up their plays coming out of the sub box. So touch four, we balance into position. We get the dumper with the ball in hand, dumping the ball, 
Call gets passed back to him by the scooper and they drive it straight down the middle for touch five and we run a little wee double play there. Um, whereas you'll find off a direct set, um, generally it'll be smack, 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 turn around, fourth touch, fifth touch, scoop and run um, without the same sort of planned practice setup that we've had coming out of the sub box. So yeah, transitions, three of them. Attack into defence, defence into rucking, rucking or subbing into attack. So I like the, the other three contests that we can win in winning the transition. Um, contest so when it all comes down oh, to it, Oh, if he could have taken it in, St. Bowling would have had another try, so and it would doing. have been New South Wales in front with just over nice a minute to play in this one. If you were watching closely, off. Dylan Hennessy stepped two players within the one step. Two players at once. They both came across so hard that Hennessy snapped them both back. Oh, missed opportunity there for New South Wales as Queensland have a good roll on through Moore. Russell gets the touch. Moore, oh, the cutout no! pass. Oh, it's heartbreak at the death. How many times have we seen together, it? Queensland just inside. know how to drive no the dagger in. in. Norman, the, the captain, leads by example. Clean, what a pass to Russell had set it up with the no previous defense. run. And Moore, you Defense called him. He was looming. He was coming. It was danger. It's disaster. And here we go in the final 30 seconds. Check this out from Moore. Bang! Oh. Left to right, and look who it is. Um, contesting momentum. So, momentum for me is defensively based around training. So, contesting momentum, I want to be back eight metres on the turnover. Now, attacking to defence, once I give the ball up, I want my defensive team set inside three seconds. Okay, if we're set inside three seconds, we've won the transition, and we're going to be able to then press to try and win the momentum contest as well. So we automatically set eight metres off that seven metre line. Bang, we'll set eight metres. We're ready to go when the referee comes to meet us. Cool, he'll either set in front of us or beside us. Nice and easy, but we're good for eight metres. Eight metres, eight metres, eight metres, ten metres, ten metres for those touches. Um, main reason is touches four and five um, generally are the most common offside penalties. So if we look to have practiced and rehearsed uh, 10 metres on those, then even if the referee does pull us 8 metres, 9 metres, um, and those ones, even though it's 7, if they pull us, we're not going to have those penalties. So we'll be responsible for ensuring that we're on side. Cool, whilst the referee is a great guide and we'll be communicating with him the whole way, um, to win the momentum battle, you've got to be fit. You've got to be energetic, enthusiastic, um, you know, lots of effort and really going for it. So we'll have our own sets. 8 metres, 8 metres, 8 metres, 10 metres, 10 metres. Cool, touch three defensively for us should be on the 10 metre line. If we've gone back 8 metres, step forward two to make the touch, gone back eight, step forward two, gone back eight, step forward two, bang, we're standing right on the 10 metre line. Then we can pull 10 metres to halfway, step forward two, bang, pull another 10 metres. Cool, we should be four metres off the 10 metre line from um, our side of halfway, and we can make that fifth touch and just accelerate out of there, covering the next 10 metres before we engage for that sixth touch. So to win, to win the momentum battle, really, really hard. Um, that's where all the fitness comes into it. And winning that momentum battle, if I have the ball, is fitness and footwork. Again, so footwork to ensuring um, that we're going to win those little wee ruck contests. So more Touch examples of that on contest. The line. So New South Wales. So as referees, what are we defense. looking at or looking for as the defence flies up fast? And a bit the into timing, this one. so making sure we control them and hold them until the half touches the ball. To half time. Dominating New South Wales here. They're ensuring in all sorts. That we're watching Someone's going to have to go for half. And the ball goes to the ground. That's treatments. exactly what Queensland are aiming to do. We can then not miss things like seven on the field, etc. Et and force the turnover. So New South Wales. Again, we're looking at that contact in the roll ball. up. So in the Towards touch. halfway, this is good meters on offer in the first players two plays. Holding players to ensure they're not shooting too early. A little scoot away there as the well from the Edwards. They deserve. His brother Connor was earlier featured game. in the mixed opens. Oh, great little dump and still going here is Hennessy, but Ooh. caught in the end. Well, I mean, we've seen some incredible stuff and it's working for them so far. Here they come trying to reduce that deficit once more and bring it back to a level ball game. Kane so when the attack is smooth and Langbridge finds a way for Hennessy. We still need Despite to ensure that when they are bodies, they still did pretty well to work it away there. Last play now for Hennessy. Holds it first. for an age. Batted on now from Little. Little receives it back. 
Flings it across. Here, Marshall King. Here. There's options here. Oh, oh the flick pass came from Masashi. But he didn't see that he popped back towards the middle. Think it's going to be. So that brings us to the next one, really which is important. contesting position. So to contest position, two places it can be contested. It's in the ruck or in the pass. Um, so I don't see enough work being done in this space at the moment. People are using their feet to try and win a ruck. They're you know, holding people up in the ruck. They're now just dumping and driving their head into people's tummies, this cannonball, it's terrible technique, it's dangerous, um, but that's because we're not working enough on footwork. Shorten your steps, ball in two hands, don't show which hand you're going to dump it with, bang, footwork, get to the side and get that ball down nice and strong on the outside hip, ball in the outside hand, cool, protection leg to dump the ball. Um, so we've taken away the opportunity for the players to actually get into a little wee contest there uh, by teaching them bad habits and bad techniques. Um, for me at the moment, I believe, you know, one of the biggest flaws in the game um, is that people have gone to this dropping the head cannonball style because they want to play the ball with their right hand no matter what. So defensively, my players, if you're going to go, you know, make three or four touches in that set, we're primarily going to be stepping to our left side when someone comes in. So you come driving in on me, I'm going to step to the left hand side to make that touch. Main reason is over 90% of you are going to be right handed and you're going to want to use your right hand to play the ball. Cool, so by me stepping to that left, my left side, which is your right hand side, all I'm trying to do is put you onto your bad hand, get a ball transfer and get it down. Cool, but most players are still gonna try and play the ball with their right hand and get caught not square, or my feet will get in the way, or whatever it's gonna look like there. And I believe that contest there is where you hear this language, you're getting beat into the bend. You know, and it can be a bit frustrating because we don't bend our backs. You know, oh, you're getting beaten. You're not bending your back. Well, we don't bend our backs. When we go to play the ball, we bend our hips, knees, and ankles. Get a nice lunge in, and we should have a nice strong upper body driving through the ruck. Cool, with this nice strong angle on it. Not bent at the back with my legs straight. That's terrible technique. So getting beaten to the bend um, is a terminology that I don't use in my coaching at all. Um, yeah, we use footwork. You know, shorten your steps. Ball in two hands so they can't read. If the opposition are going to run in with the ball already hooked in their hand, um, then I'm going to be able to tell, oh, gee, they're going to play the ball with that hand. I step to that side because I can read there, you know, and then they play the ball on my feet and I'm already stationary and I'm getting done for feet in the ruck. So there's a little bit of, you know, learning that's got to go on there from my players on how to contest that ruck a little bit better and not get caught by the referee. Um, even if we're stationary, sometimes we get done because the ball gets played on our foot. We get done for, ball in the, uh, for feet in the ruck. Whereas I see at the moment that the contest, if we're beating, you know, beating them to the space and we're stationary and locked in there and all I've done is step to the left and they've played the ball on me that we, we should be winning those opportunities. Correct. So we do get it wrong sometimes as referees, we need to acknowledge that. Comes away and fresh over the field. Human. Yeah, they're having a crack. This could be problems for Queensland. The correct decision, but where so you're contesting Martin. position. The other way is contesting the point. pass. Um, you know, the there's great players out there. Then he interfered afterwards. Um, it should have been that I play against and will be to my team. Do not look for short passes around that player. That player is worth one short intercept a game. Um, you know, do not pass the ball and look for a link or you know for a chopping link against these players here. They are great channel defenders. So channel defence is important. That's a way to contest the ball. Um, and contest the pass. So channel defence is based around the link, getting onside and getting up as quickly as he can into the passing lane, set to make the touch um, on the middle that's chopping to score, but also set to be in between the person who's passing the ball and the link that's chopping behind me. That releases my winger to go back out and uh, be able to hold space inside but defend their winger. Uh, the challenge with channel defence is that people think that it's all about this defender out here, um, but a lot of the time it's impossible for them to get onside and get up. Um, so therefore we have to let the runner run with the ball a little bit. So the middles on the inside have got to create space so that the scooper picks the ball up, sees space and goes to run and they bring the ball into the line, which gives my link time to get onside and then get up into the channel and then play the ball. Whereas if I've got a middle making a touch and cornering and I've got a middle that's going to shut that dummy half really quickly, well that forces an early release of the pass because he's coming flying in. So if that ball's gonna be released early, my link's not gonna have time to get on side and get up. Cool, so there's a couple of other things that have to happen on the inside for us to be contesting the ball on the pass. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good fun one. So back to the contests. Contest transition, contest momentum, and contest possession. So they're all contests um, that we're looking to win and there's little things that we're gonna do inside that. 
um, to help us achieve our goals, you know, both defensively and on attack. So watch the link up in the channel. As, As a referee, Marshall what are we King. looking for? This Getting could be the time they launch it. Marshall King, the flat oh, ball. Oh, it was a beauty. The ball was and they stepped into them up they and got in the way of it. It was Kenny. So we need to make sure that we are watching what's happening and right ensuring foot. that we're getting those decisions right. New South Wales were walking over. Queensland player hit the deck and stayed down. Or as they come down the field There's further, the watch the positioning of New South, South Wales defenders. Are so they able to get up and into that thing? Cut down on shot down position. Russell now on the last right? looking so to link up. Right? Gets it away. Oh, oh what a dive! You're joking. Hegarty head over feet. And with one of the best put downs you'll ever see. Masashi was even on the spot, but he still the couldn't do anything for us about as it. Is that and being is able to see ridiculous! Exactly what oh my goodness! Look at this. Ensuring we're getting players, players on side before they get involved. Goosey and then sees Hegarty in the corner. Oh my goodness! Braden Hegarty. So. Hope you learnt a little bit. There's a lot of information in there. Um, happy to elaborate too. There might be something that I've said and you guys are like, hey man, I need a little bit more. Happy for you to reach out. Um, but yeah, cool. Love the work you guys are doing, um, especially around the education of the game. It's really nice to see we're all students of the game. And I love the work you're doing around being better athletes as well. Um, as we know, there's, you know, players and referees of the athletes in the game of touch. So congratulations for everything you're doing. Look forward to being a little bit more involved. Catch you up. So have a look at one final clip to see how much you can identify from what we've spoken about. We didn't speak about too much technicalities Wailo, of the referee space, apart from throw, some obvious things to look for. And I think Sometimes he would have needed to be so at least seven foot to reel that one in, unfortunately. As Ben Bao comes out to the right-hand side. So running a subset, so looking at our positioning and how we're able to then control we'll and manage the seven set, metres. Especially in for this their interchange, instance, that was where they're all over the place, we need to be able to manage all of those players to also be able to foot. Oh. And the right! Oh, the ankles are breaking left, right, and centre. Oh, oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Corey Russell with the absolute ankle breaker. Bang! Then Pride has a turn. Let me have a left foot. Oh. Then Russell goes, Let me have a right foot. Oh. Langbridge goes down. <laughs> and Quaylo just getting the arm out. Stopping Kenny in the corner, but my goodness, what football on display by Queensland. Well, it looked like the players were wearing ice skates for a moment. They could barely stand up. Such was the footwork. But they're still hanging firm, though, New South Wales, despite those ankle breakers. Oh, a little oh, slip no. here at the death. That opens up just enough of a gap. And there it is, through Corey Russell. You've mentioned him as a top five player. He's wearing the number five tonight, and he gets Queensland another try. It must be pretty dewy out there because players are falling all over the place. But Russell taking advantage of Luke Kane slipping over. Yeah, and unfortunately, Langbridge as well, trying to come across. There's no way he could leave. So hopefully you've learnt some aspects uh, that you maybe weren't so aware of. As referees, we need to be on the ball. I know we haven't spoken a lot about the technical aspects in this particular video for referees, but game awareness. We really need to make sure we are aware of what's happening on the field. Quite often, new referees and sometimes experienced referees under fatigue will become very ball focused, watching that roll ball intently, forgetting that we need to lift our heads up when we get down near the try line and see what's happening. Players in motion, listening to calls for plays being run, defensive structures and shapes like all of these aspects we need to watch clearly and carefully the half the direction that the half is facing when they pick the ball up quite often that's the direction the play will go sometimes that is a fake move and that it's going there once and then long ball the other way but if we're looking at the shape of the defense if we're looking at the lanes and the movement of players we're actually going to pick that up the majority of the time so good luck with it all hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the importance of game awareness and a few things to look for so especially around where players are going to go and why what contests there are and what we need to look for as referees in those contests and how to manage those players a little better in thinking about it so as always if you have any questions reach out we appreciate you attending and listening if you have any other ideas that you need us to talk about or want us to talk about please do reach out otherwise we wish you all the best and we'll hopefully see you around soon.